Hi, I'm Eileen Roach from Designs and Machine Embroidery, and I'm excited to be here today. It's Hoop Day. We are going to talk all about monster hoops. And we're going to take a look at the June doors that many people have been posting online. So first, let's just say hello to our guests that are joining us. Uh, Paula Johnson, hi from Virginia. Uh, my daughter just moved up to Virginia, Paula. And she raves about it. She just says that it's beautiful there. She's in the Norfolk area. I don't know where you are, but type in. Let us know what town you're from. And hi, Laura from Lincoln, Nebraska. Great to have you here. And uh, Janie Tietzen, you say you want to thank you for your staff member, Nicolette. She is so helpful. I know. She wonderful. Boy, we're blessed to have Nicolette. She is phenomenal. And, um, and thank you for your kind words about uh, these Thursday videos. I, I really enjoy them. And I think it's a great way to share information and you know communicate with each other because I learn from all of you. So many of you make comments and let me know, um, you know topics to talk about, maybe some struggles that you're having with your embroidery. And of course, uh, you know, I'm always interested in hearing what you are actually working on. So um, it looks like we have a lot of people uh, joining us, uh, Ramona from Rena, Reno and Misha, you're here today. Hi, Misha. Thanks for joining us. And Bonnie, you're all the way up in Canada. And here we have Ling in uh, Portland. Sandy, I guess it is your first name. And oh, great to have Ashley Jones here, our uh, educator that lives in Puerto Rico. So it's always wonderful to have her here. And, you know, if I stumble on something, she'll answer your question in the chat, I'm sure and Delia Flores from California. So today we're going to, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna open up a monster hoop box so you know what to expect when you get it home. Then we're going to talk about where you find those rulers and how you put them on the hoop. And then uh, we're gonna take a look at all the different sizes. And I have a t-shirt and a couple quilt sandwiches and a terry towel and things like that, that we're going to hoop. And then I have the Solaris set up with a monster hoop on it and a project. And I'm gonna show you how you would advance the fabric without taking that uh, bottom frame off. And then I even have a, a single needle tubular machine, the Alliance, Baby Lock Alliance is here. So we're gonna talk about tubular items. So um, we have a lot to do. And you know, fingers crossed it all goes well, right? So let's go and take a look at um, the doors that people have been making because they are really phenomenal. If you'll rem if you remember, this is um, the uh, my doors. I did a dark one and a light one, and so it was exciting to see uh, what people would come up with next. So um, let me oh, hang on one second. Bear with me while I get this. Um, PowerPoint up and running. Oh, and that's not good. <laughs> Definitely not good. Okay, and PowerPoint. All righty. Yeah, Judy Warren, sounds like fun. It will be fun as long as you're not on my side, right? So let's see if I hit enter. Um, well, maybe my buddy Sam um, Solomon, who's in the office, will come in and behind the scenes and get this running for me because I'm not really sure why PowerPoint won't advance to the next slide. But um, let's see, maybe if I stop the screen and then advance, uh, maybe not. Okay, so let's head over to the um, over to the hoop box so that you can see exactly what's in that. And I'm going to fill the screen with that. So let's go ahead and do that first. Uh, and we'll hide this so you have full screen. All right, so let's head over there. And um, when you are at your sewing machine retailer, and you know many of them stock Monster Hoop. So what you want to look for is this green label that has, um, it, obviously it has the brand on it, the size, and this LM1 is uh, a code, you know, it's an item number code. You don't really have to worry about it too much. But just like sheets are sold, you know, bed linens, where it tells you, um, you know, it, it's a king, a queen, or a uh, twin bed, that's what this de designates. And right on that side, it tells you all the machines that it's compatible with. Now, if your machine, is oh, a recent machine and it has a number that's just a digit off than maybe what's on the label, don't be too concerned because if a 
standard baby lock brother hoop fits your machine so will our monster okay so you'll slide this sleeve off and you'll set that aside and then you'll open up your box and it has you know some packing materials in there but it's all shrink wrapped as one unit and it has a metal frame on the bottom and the attachment of course is recognized by the machine the top has what we call the hoop shield the magnet shield and you'll use that for storage once you unwrap it you take off uh, you, when you're actually going to use the hoop, you remove the plastic shield. That's just for storage. But it makes it easier to separate the, um, the top frame from the bottom frame when it's stored. Otherwise, it's really a, a problem. So, okay. Also in that box, you're going to find some instructions like congratulations on your purchase. Woo woo. And you'll have a sheet of Target stickers in there. And you'll notice that this is stapled. And that's because inside, I'm gonna tear this one apart. Inside, this is where you're going to find your adhesive rulers. So many people, you know, toss this away and don't know that that's where they're stored. And there are four, they're folded in half and they have, you know, a protective paper on the back and then that's removable when it's time to apply. Also in here are uh, instructions on how to apply those rulers. So they're clearly illustrated. There's a link to go to download a crosshair. It's a stitched crosshair. And if you have perfect alignment laser, it's really helpful to use that. But if you don't, you can apply them also. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So we'll set all this aside. And then I'll show you how to put those rulers on the actual frame. So here I have already stitched out my, um, my crosshair. And the key is when you hoop your stabilizer, you want to make sure that the top frame is aligned with the bottom frame. And the easiest way to do that is to take uh, the frame and stand it up and push down and then flip it around this way and push down that way. And the edges will all meet. And then stitch your crosshair and then take your adhesive ruler and position that zero right in the center a parallel to that horizontal line. And you'll do that on both sides, right? You could get a ruler and extend that all the way out if you don't have PAL, or you, know, you could just do it um, by eyeball for sure. But once you have that position, you, you know, you're going to remove that protective paper on the back and of course this one's not scored. Sometimes they're scored and it's easier to uh, pull it apart. Okay, well I don't need to do that. So basically that's how you do it. You'll get those two sides done and then you'll repeat for um, the horizontal edges and then you're good to go. You'll trim off that excess and now you always know where center is, right? Really, I don't worry so much about center. What I worry about is that these lines, these individual lines are parallel with each other, top to bottom with, with the hoop. That's what I reference more than anything. Okay, so that is a five by seven. And you know, this crosshair, it doesn't matter which one you download. If you just download the five by seven, but you have a jumbo hoop, just get a marker, a marker and a ruler and extend that line all the way out to the edge of the hoop. And you know, then you're good to go. Doesn't matter what size it is. Okay, so let's take a look at a four by four. So know that your hoop is recognized by the machine, right? So here I am in a center chest adult t-shirt in a four by four hoop. So when I'm going to go to the machine, I would at this time nest all of this above the hoop. So basically I'm going to turn the, the shirt inside out. And it's a little clunky at first for sure, because I want to get all of the bulk of the shirt above the machine bed. And I'll pull out my sleeves so that I don't get them caught. And then I open up that design area. I open up that design area. And then I often use the shield, the plastic shield, 
to actually transport the hoop to the machine. This way I can move it around my sewing room without harming anything and I don't have to, um, I don't have to worry about dismantling, you know, the, the fabric from the hoop because it's, it's an open frame. So if I were to grab it like this, I'm going to misalign the bottom frame from the top frame and probably move my fabric. So use those plastic shields. They're really helpful. All right, that's a four by four. Let's move that aside. And now on a five by seven, this size I often use for knits. I use it for terry cloth. I use it for small quilt projects, although I don't do a lot of small quilt projects, but it's wonderful for terry cloth. So when you, have, um, when you have your stabilizer positioned on top of the metal frame, you cover your towel, you know, you place your towel over it and then take the metal frame, position it perpendicular right at the attachment. I can feel that there. And then I make sure that it's somewhat aligned at the top and then I just drop it and I pull my fabric because I'm not going to distort my fabric like I would in a standard hoop because there's no hills and valleys, no up and over that inner and outer ring. So, um, you know, you don't ever have to worry about pulling and tugging on the fabric. It does not leave a hoop burn. You can see there's a mark and that'll just brush away because it's terry cloth, but it's a nice strong hold and it's perfect for all kinds of embroidery. So here you can see I'm not holding onto the frame. I'm just holding onto the, um, the garment, the towel itself. Is it working? I, okay. So, um, look at this beautiful monogram. How, whoops, that's upset. How pretty is that? Isn't that beautiful? I love that micro print. Uh, so this is the eight by eight. And this is a great size for pillow tops or quilt blocks. This is going to be a pillow. And, uh, you know, so I've cut my fabric a little generously so that it would extend beyond the frame. And then I just stitched my giant monogram. I made that in pep. It was so fast, so easy. I love it. Super fun. And then, of course, I had to play with some metallics. So here is a beautiful large quilting design. I hope you can see just how beautiful that is. Of course, that batik is sometimes um, a challenge to see all that beautiful metallic. But this is the nine and a half by nine and a half. Now, don't be confused by my bright blue attachment because this is an early prototype. So sometimes I get the early stuff and I love it so much, I never give it back and replace it with, you know, the current one. But all of our attachments are the teal. So know that, you know, if you get a teal in the nine and a half by nine and a half, that's correct. Mine here is not correct. But love that for quilting. It's just a generous nine and a half by nine and a half. Great for nine inch blocks, eight inch blocks. Gives you some wiggle room to move around because that's what's really important, right? If you try to bring up a nine and a half by nine and a half design in a nine and a half by nine and a half hoop, boy, you have to nail that perfect placement, which, you know, we have tools for that too. But I'll tell you, with quilting, I always go with a little bit bigger than normal just to give myself some uh, added space. So let's see. Um, and then here we have a this size is the nine and a half by 14. Now this is a really generous size also, and I love this for placemats. So this is a whole placemat all the way around. And um, when I take this out of the hoop, the only thing I have to do is bind it. I have it, you know, stitched on all the way through with my quilt sandwich. So I have a reversible set of placemats. And this is, just a 16 inch width of fabric, I think. And boy, in a, I could get three of these on a width of fabric. So in one yard, I would get six placemats. And then, you know, after all the quilting is done, cut them apart, bind them. Oh, I love that. Great, great gift idea. Great gift idea. And then the biggest hoop for Baby Lock Brother, whoo! It, I can barely get this on the screen, right? This is the 10 by 16. So do I think it's 10 and a half by 16? Isn't that giant? It is huge. So I use this for really big jobs, like quilting with a really, you know, uh, with a full size quilt. 
it, it can be unwieldy to use. So you have to pay attention to what you're doing. It's really a very large hoop, but it's very sturdy. And um, I, I really love it. So uh, my friend over here, Sam, is telling me, he's kind of, I don't know what he's telling me. <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, well, we can move over to the machine at this time. Okay, so what do we have there, Sam? We have the PowerPoint. Okay, we have the PowerPoint ready to roll. Right yeah. Okay, so I just hit the mouse. Okay. Ooh. Okay, well, how do I advance? Um, Apple. I know, but I can't advance the slides. Yeah, it, uh, enter. Cool. Yeah. Computer. Okay, so. All right, he's trying to get me up to snuff because I, I really want to share those dime doors. There are so many beautiful ones. But, um, okay, so let's see. There we go. Okay, now we're in business. All right, so the first one I brought up is Sue Brown. She did The Secret Garden. Isn't that great? I love it. And uh, Alicia Gentry, she's been following along and making every dime door. I remember her name. She did The Hope Chapel. Well, we could use some hope right now in America, huh? Anyway, beautiful, just beautiful. Oh, I'm going too fast. And then the next one is Muriel, Muriel Butler. I love the sky fabric that you used for the window. You added your own door. That is just beautiful, just charming. And then Nancy Engleton, you added a circular window, which is very appropriate for that shaped door for sure, with a beautiful grill detail in the middle. I love that, very well done. And then Marjorie Hirschberger, you added a cross, which I think is from My Lace Charms, if I'm not mistaken, to your door. Very lovely. And Jane Morris is traditional root. I love the terracotta pots. A really beautiful use of, uh, you know, color selection. Just gorgeous. Chris Yost, you also did a um, circular window, and you have a glass slipper there. So I'm wondering if that is. Um, a, a nod to Cinderella because, because we have some Mickey Mouse ears at the top and um, some beautiful torches and a black cat. Really very fun. And then Cindy King, there you are. This is your anniversary, your 40th anniversary. I love how you commemorated that on this door. Just beautiful. The yellow roses, uh, they're just lovely. Just, just lovely. Um, yeah, they're beautiful. Gala... George or Jorge, not really sure about that. You chose lilac flowers. That's really beautiful. And Susan Lady, I, Lady, I think you're from North Texas. I see your Carter Blood Care. That was your uh, May door. And just sneaking into the photo there. So thanks for sharing that. I don't know the story behind it. You have Fraser established 1716 or 18. So uh, it would be interesting to learn all about that from you for sure. Very nice. Linda Di Giovanni, you chose a really pretty, beautiful uh, pink thread for your flowers. And I like your petite door. Very, very nice. And Isabel Brian, you added a squirrel to the front and center. And you have uh, some other embellishments. Uh, you also added the, the torch at the, the sconce there up on the um, wall and your, a circular window. And then you also have another symbol at the top, which uh, could possibly be a religious symbol. Sandy Arcuri, uh, I, you, oh, you used a variegated thread for your roses and your leaves. That's lovely, just beautiful. And Lisa Grainley, uh, you chose purple. And uh, you also have those wall sconces. Really beautiful work, really beautiful work. Mary Carlton, I love those burgundy, deep, deep red um, roses. They are just beautiful. I used to have a rose bush in my garden that was that color, um, it, beautiful roses. And then I like your welcome mat, Dwani Howard over here on the right-hand side, just beautiful. And your, your uh, fabric selection is awesome. That wood grain for the building and that kind of uh, has a really beautiful patina for the door. It's kind of an old world feel, beautiful. Nancy English, you did a great job on your fabric selection also. You have vertical wood, 
going, um, you know, up and down on the door, obviously. And Layla, you also found some really pretty wood fabric that the scale is just perfect and your stonework in the foreground. Wow, that was a great find, that fabric. I would, uh, I would venture to guess for sure. And then Patty Dunnington, your Celtic um, symbol there on the door is beautiful. And you also used a variegated thread, I believe. That's a really pretty pink and white, very nice. And Luann Greenberg, 1974, not really sure what that means. Maybe that's when you were married. Um, not sure. And uh, then the pretty, um, like a bow of uh, greens at the top. Just beautiful. And Deborah Morgan, you chose a wood fabric that kind of runs horizontal. Really interesting. I love that. That looks great. And really nice wood fabric uh, in the foreground. And you have a, a dragonfly zooming through the sky there. And Candy Bray, you also used variegated thread, not only in the flowers, but also in the in the uh, pots, the, the pots and maybe the grass. Not sure. But anyway. Oh, and your leaves are also variegated. Really beautiful. And I think these are our last two. This is Patricia Lee Shoemaker. She also found some really nice wood grain door fabric. And Lynn Wingington, you chose a bold print for the door, but the scale is really perfect, really very lovely. Oh, these are just great examples. I love seeing how everyone's is so different. So if you haven't shared yours yet, please do. Um, we'd like to, um, you know, showcase them every week. And we do that every week. You know, we spend a couple minutes to, to do that so that uh, everybody gets to see what other people are doing. That's, you know, one of the fun parts about this. So um, let's see some of the comments. I, I know that uh, there, there were some questions about hoops for sure. And we're going to get over to that machine in a minute. Is there a baby lock 8x12? There is a baby lock 8x12. And, you know, let's go back to PowerPoint and I can show you, um, I can show you, um, no, can't show you the next slides. Okay, so I'm going to take myself out and Sam will, um, I'll go over to the machine at this time. How about that? And Sam, maybe you work your magic. Okay. So here we are at the machine. So you can see I've already, this is actually, you know, a finished project, but I just thought I would show you the technique on once you do one design, and then let's say you have your template um, for your next design positioned in place. Then you just simply lift that top frame and slide it over the head of the machine and then slide your fabric so that your template is centered underneath the needle. And you would take a little bit of time. I would normally do this when I'm sitting at the machine, but if I really do it now, you'll, you'll just see the back of me. You won't see the whole machine. But then I use the navigation keys on the machine to center the needle over my template. And then when I'm satisfied with that placement, I then just re lift that template from the back and pull it away. And then I'm ready to stitch that next design. So this is a table runner and it's, you know, rather a small item, but imagine if we were on a full size quilt, which we'll do later this summer, um, then it's a little different, right? You really, you know, you're kind of in the middle of the whole quilt and you may not be able to see exactly where you are. And that's, we'll discuss some alignment tools that you would use, some marking on your fabric. And also of course the rulers on the hoops really help with alignment at that time. So, but that's such a great tip. You know, I would do that whole quilt without taking that bottom frame off. It, it would just stay on the whole time. I'm able to advance my fabric by just lifting and storing that top frame. So super, I love that. Okay, so I'm going to spin the camera over to the multi-needle machine. So just kind of close your eyes, bear with me a minute because you know we're gonna turn it all around. But there we have our multi-needle. It's not really a multi-needle, it's a single needle machine, but it's a tubular machine and that's what's important to you. So unlike our Solaris and Destiny and our Bernina machines, you know, that are a flatbed, they're really a sewing machine that has an embroidery unit attached to it. This is different. It has a, it's tubular and my garment can slide 
over the throat of the of you know the bobbin right the bobbin area the throat so i can slide that over and just insert those arms into uh the pantograph and now in here you can see that i you know there's my throat and you always want to make sure your last thing you do before you press go is to make sure this is clear that you know that you didn't get the bottom of the shirt or the back of the shirt underneath the bobbin case. You want to be able to have a completely open area. So that's our four by four, great for onesies. And you know, so that's how it would go on. And I often try, if it's possible, to hoop and then rotate the design so that when I place it on the machine, I go through the opening on the leg or the waist and not the neck because that's a smaller opening. So it's just easier to open, you know, to insert the hoop on the machine bottom first. And you know, you have the ability in the machine to rotate the design. Now, one little tip I'll tell you when it's applique, make sure you're putting it back on in the proper orientation or your applique will not work out. Okay, so I have another hoop here that I wanna show you, which is the five by seven. And uh, here's a t-shirt that I did a couple weeks ago and I did it at home on my multi-needle. So here you can see that the, uh, the magnetic frame is on the bottom and that's applied in that fashion so that the garment can hang underneath the frame. So when I slide this onto the machine, same as that onesie, I'm gonna do it uh, waist first. Oh, my shirt is... <laughs> Caught. Okay, so now I have to change uh, this the position of my arm, and I just, you know, you all know how to do this. If you have this machine, you just loosen those screws, pull that out till it clicks in place, and then lock it down. Now, if you um, have a design on your machine that you know should fit that hoop, um, and you keep getting a message that says design is too large for the hoop, then it's most likely because your screws back here are not tightened. So then I just, and I'm able to stitch my design. Now, what if you have uh, the multi-needle machine and you have the big table and you're working on a heavier project? Well, no harm at all in attaching that frame to the top. So let me do that off camera here for a second so you can see what I mean. Oh my gosh. And I'll take this towel that we used in the other, in the other presentation and just to show you what I mean. So this hoop is very versatile in the sense that I could also place it on the top. So if you're quilting with this hoop, you would probably want that magnetic frame on top. And now it works just as beautifully. Again, you wanna make sure that you clear that um, with the bulk of your fabric, you clear the throat of the machine. You don't wanna get it caught under the hoop. Last thing you should do is lift it and make sure there's nothing between the bottom of the fabric and, and the bobbin, and then you're ready to stitch. So this is a very versatile hoop. It's not the only one we make though. We also make one that is not recognized by the machine. And this is called quick snap. So quick snap is attached to the pantograph and not the arms of the machine. So I would actually release these screws and remove these arms and attach this device to the pantograph itself. And when you do that, the machine thinks it's the largest hoop and it, but you are able to hoop vertically. So this is great for pant legs to slide on here, for um, tote bags that you wanna do like a center panel and you know long. So it's really um, very versatile and it comes in three different sizes. So in one box. So it has a two inch opening by eight, a four inch opening and a five and a half by eight which are just great sizes for skinny areas and onesies and you know all types of different projects, all types of finished goods that you would wanna do on a tubular machine. So that is about it. So let me come back and see if we can take a look at the compatibility chart. 
Okay. Um, so it'll work now? Yeah. Okay. With the mouse? Okay. So we're getting there. There we go. Well, it's hoop day. So some of my timing's off. Sorry about that. Um, oh, Cindy King is asking her connection is cutting in and out. Okay. Um, where do you get that hoop? Well, at your local sewing machine retailer for sure. Uh, lots of our retailers have this hoop, have our hoops in stock. So um, you are welcome to always uh, check in with your local dealer and see if they have the one that you want. On our website, you just go to dzgns.com and uh, there's all kinds of information as you scroll down that page. There's a video that you can watch, but you can scroll down that page. And towards the bottom is where it says to click for the machine capability chart. And so there, when you click over, there is a little blue um, highlighted word, click here to download it. And then this is what you will find. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but the hoop sizes are at the top horizontal bar. And on the left is the actual machine models and brands. And in the center is the number RM1 for Bernina and RM2 and LM5 for brother and baby lock and so forth. So that's how you find out all of the different um, sizes that are available. So we do have a special today that is uh, plus free shipping. So use the promo code AHS65FSQ, which I think I actually have as a ban ban banner. So let me um, get back over here. Sam, now I can't get back over here. Here we go. So we do have some questions. Can the quick snap two be used on both a brother PRS 100 and six under? Yes, they can. Yes, they can. It will think it is the, um, the largest hoop, the eight by 12, I believe. Cindy King, yes, your connection cut in, in and out and I did feature your beautiful door. So happy wedding anniversary to you and your husband for sure. Um, and let's see, uh, and Jackie, you've never seen that type of machine before. Oh, they're a wonderful, it's a single needle, a single color. So, I mean, you can change the color, but, um, it only has one needle. It's not very intimidating. Some people find the multi-needle machines to be intimidating, but they really aren't. They really aren't. So, um, never worry about that because they're uh, easy to use and uh, all you do is change the, the thread just like we do in the others so it's pretty easy and let's see um this is okay we have some uh custom customer assistance going on which is great they're telling you what sizes we have and so forth it was very helpful and when will the larger magnetic hoops come out for viking or fop that can do a 12 by 12 block well we we have a 200 by 360 for Viking and Foff coming out probably in about 60 days. Um, so we don't have one for the uh, larger than that at this time. That's what we're currently working on for sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, what is the template printed on? So the Deborah, the template that I used is printed on print and stick target template paper that comes in a pack of 25 sheets and you run it through your printer and uh, by open it in software. And don't forget, we have free software to do just that, which is the embroidery tool shed. If you don't have any software, you're welcome to download our embroidery tool shed. And then you would use that to print a template with a crosshair on uh, that print stick target paper. Of course you could use regular copy paper, but the beauty of that print stick target paper is it's tacky. I could do one whole quilt with just one, one template, you know, if I'm doing the same design, but um, there it's wonderful. I love that stuff. It's really great. Uh, and yes, uh, Mathalie, uh, I, no, it's not limited to baby lock. Baby lock and brother, of course, all the hoops are identical. We also make them for Bernina and we have a limited amount, limited sizes in, in Viking and Foff. We do also make them for the Janome 500 embroidery only machine. We do not make it for the Janome 15,000. They're top of the line. It is, um, it is, uh, 
we did so much testing with Janome and it, and even with Janome's uh, parent, you know, them themselves, and it just wouldn't work out. So it's a heavy, it's a heavy hoop. So that's why, but it is really, um, it is really, you know, they're, they're great hoops. And if you have that 500, you'll love it. You'll absolutely love it. So let's see what other, can the quick snap, uh, uh, Cindy King wants to know how many dime doors got, uh, how many of the OLM doors got featured? Well, yeah, the dime doors, I, I don't know how many of them were from OML. They're not tagged that way, but um, they, they kind of all start here, <laughs> right? So let's see. And um, Terry, you purchased the hoop mat, which you love. What do the hoop guards do? Well, the hoop guards, how about if I bring one over, right? Let me bring that over so you can see. But the hoop guard allows you to uh, keep control of a excess fabric so it doesn't fall into, into the sewing field. So here, I'll show you right here. I'll bring this up um, so you can see. So the, the hoop guard, fits on the side of the top frame, right? Because this is magnetic, because this is magnetic, it just slaps, snaps right in place. And you place it on the machine. Here's my attachment on this side. You know, let's go over to that other camera because we have that camera right there. So let's go do it. So you can see. Sam, can you pull those others out? Do you know how to do that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so here we are. So I'm gonna flip this around so it's as you would see it at your machine, just so you can see. Here's my attachment. You always wanna apply the hoop guard opposite the attachment. And then when I'm at the machine, I roll my fabric up because the head of my machine would be positioned right here. And then this will not fall in. It will not fall in. It just is wonderful. And it's all been engineered and designed so that the needle bar does not hit this. And you're able to travel very close to the edge, you know, the per perimeter of the design like you normally would, but this is beautiful. So whenever I'm doing a big quilt or a terry cloth towel, I often have this attached. It's also really handy for onesies. We've d shown that before. I, I am not set up here to do that now, but it, you don't need it for a multi-needle machine because of its tubular ability, but it is very helpful on the single needle machines for sure. It doesn't come with, but you should, oh, whenever you get a hoop, you should, oh, a monster hoop, you should buy just one hoop guard. It will work with all of your snap hoops. So can we see on bigger screen? Yeah. So Tanya, I hope that you've got a better difference. And what's the difference between snap hoop and the monster? Snap hoop was the original magnetic hoop that we came out with a long time ago, like maybe two, I don't want to give you a year. I don't know. I've been here a long time, but, um, and then we learned, you know, from you, the customer, that it, the hold wasn't strong enough. So we actually teamed up with a magnetic engineer. I mean, he was a expert on magnets and we did a tremendous amount of testing and um, learned that, you know, there's some secret sauce in the new hoops. And so they're really quite strong. And that's why now we have to, when we ship it, we ship it with that magnet shield. But, you know, as strong as they are, they don't harm your machine because, um, you know, the machines today are, th their brain is as big as your cell phone, but it's in a highly insulated area of the machine. So you don't have to worry about that magnetic field um, interfering with your machine. And we have literally sold hundreds, hundreds, and thousands of these hoops. And here in this very building where I am, there are hundreds of hoops and my machines are in here and I've never had an issue. And when that magnet is attached to the metal frame and on the machine, you know, the metal frame stops the magnetic force because, you know, that's the whole beauty of that metal frame. I mean, you want it to attach to the top so the, it's, it literally stops that magnetic force. I could show you with scissors um, that it wouldn't hold underneath, you know, once that metal is there. 
And Terry, you have snapped your finger on them. So you know, oh, that Matt helps a lot. Yeah, we've all snapped our fingers, believe me. You know, it's something that maybe you do once and then, but when I showed you earlier how you line uh, the magnetic top perpendicular to the bottom frame and then just release it by letting pulling your hands out of harm's way, that really does eliminate that uh, problem. So, but you do have to be careful. Uh, let's see. And are there magnetic hoops for the Viking Designer SE? We make one size for the SE, I believe, which is the 120 by 120. Yep. Um, and Misha, you hate how Viking limits the size of their hoops and they make the same machine and give it different prices. Well, they must have a reason. They must have a reason. So, uh, and does it work with the Viking Designer 1? And Joan, is that the, is the Viking Designer 1 the one that came out like 15 years ago? If so, that would, it would not work with that. Yep. It would not work with that. You know, things change and panographs change and we have to keep up with that technology and we can't, um, we can't reverse engineer, you know, we have to do it from the top. So uh, let's see, B Bridget, you have a dream too. And if you could buy two hoops, what would you suggest? So when I am asked that question, I then ask you, Bridget, what what hoops do you normally use of your standard hoops? Do you normally use a four by four and a five by seven, or do you normally use um, the eight by 12 or maybe the nine and a half by 14? And and if you kind of use them all, then talk, then consider what types of projects you're hoping to do in a magnetic hoop. If it's a lot of children's wear, go with a small hoop, like a four by four or five by seven. If you're quilting, well, that's kind of a tough one because if you're, you know, if you're doing whole quilts, then go as big as your machine will allow. If you do smaller projects like by the block, then go with maybe the eight, and the eight by eight or the nine and a half by nine and a half. If you have that upgrade on your dream two, which I imagine you would, if that's why it's called the dream two. So um, it's, you know, it, it's a tough question. It's a dilemma. I can tell you, and Tana, you only need one on the nine by 14 or should you use two? I think you're talking about the hoop guard. Um, you know, I have only, I only use one. I've tried to use two at one time and I, I most certainly gives you more security, but you also have to understand that when you add that hoop guard, you are um, losing some mag magnetism that is directed to that bottom frame. So uh, one does the job for me, really. I, I've never had a, a, an issue with that. So I mean, you could buy two, we'd be happy to sell you one. Yeah, uh, and then Patricia Ann, <laughs> so glad we used magnetic hoops. Remember the days when we were told to keep magnets away? I know, I, I remember too, yep, for sure. Okay, so Bridget, you do children's end quilting. Then, you know, you can't go wrong with a five by seven hoop and then a, a larger one, the largest one that your machine will allow. A five by seven hoop is so versatile. Um, and as long as you're not doing tiny infant wear, that would be a four by four, but most children's garments can be handled in a five by seven. Um, and Pat, no, we do not make um, the hoops for the Singer Futura at this time. Yeah, let's see. Um, and Carmen, you love your hoops. I do too. I just love them. I um, I really covet them. I'll tell you. You know, I mine are often early prototypes, and like I said earlier, <laughs> I don't give them back. I don't replace them with the new one because they work. And if they work, that's great. It's good enough for me. So let's see, Tanya, you have an eight and a half, an eight by eight, nine by fourteen. Before I buy the biggest for the Lazar, are there plans to have any larger? Our plans always coincide with the machine manufacturer. So I can't make a hoop that's not recognized by the machine com machine itself. So if you hear of, you know, a baby lock or brother coming out with a larger hoop, then uh, chances are we would come out with a larger hoop, but it would be about nine to 12 months after baby lock or brother releases their new size. So, um, but you know, a 10 by 16 is a very large hoop. I, I, I would hesitate to think that it would go larger and do the job that we really um, want it to do. And P Patricia Ann, you think I should get a TV show on HGTV? Well, thank you, that's so kind, that's really sweet. You never know what's ahead, right? But it, we're pretty happy here, we're pretty happy here. Let's see. 
uh, and Misha, people are still uh, per perpetual, I'm struggling with that word, are still spreading the rumor of no magnets. Ah, that's okay. They'll get over it. Look what they're missing. Look what they're missing, right? I wouldn't want to. Uh, I Like I've mentioned earlier, if I didn't have a magnetic hoop, Believe me, I would not be embroidering today. I, there's no way I could have done 20, 20 plus years with uh, just a standard hoop. It's just it's too much stabilizer involved if you're quilting and you know, it's just it's not as much fun. And what size hoop for the baby lock endurance? Check our compatibility chart, everything will be there. Everything will be there. So, uh, well, it was so fun today. Hey, but next week we have uh, an exciting guest coming. I love the guest, right? It's always so fun. And here on PowerPoint, I actually, oh, there he is. I can get him up. I, I did it. I did it. There we are. So we have uh, Michael Johns coming up. Oh, and we missed that. Let's see. There he is. Michael Johns of Mama Boy Designs. Do any of you know Mike Johns? Have you ever met him? Have you seen any of his work? He is delightful. He myself back. Okay. He is just delightful. He's very talented and he's, his history is vast. He's been in costume. He, but wow, he's a whiz on not only embroidery, but also surging. So we'll see what uh, he's going to come up with. We're going to talk all about metallics next week. And Jill, you miss uh, uh, miss seeing me on Sewing with Nancy, and it's so easy. Well, well, I most certainly miss being on um, Sewing with Nancy, and, and like many of you, I miss Nancy Zeman so much, um, my dear friend. But um, and I miss being on It's So Easy. But you know, really, my role here has changed, and um, I it takes so much time to do television that this works out so much better for for myself and dime. So I'm, I'm happy to be here and, and I'm here more often than I ever would be on it. So easy. Right. So that's a good thing. And Marion Phillips, you love Mike Johns. Oh, good. So maybe you'll come back next week. Right. Well, it's been an awful lot of fun and I look forward to seeing you here next week at one o'clock and remember hoops, it's hoop month here. So, um, take advantage of this special offer and the good prices and the free shipping. You know, we don't do that very often at dime for hoops. So, Get them while you can.